It is the fan favorite segment, the fan zone on the touchline, where we're speaking about international football with regards to what is happening, international friendlies, Euro Cup qualifiers, UEFA Nations League. Unfortunately, England didn't qualify through to the final. Of course, Portugal and Holland meeting in the final after, uh, of course, they cruised through beating uh, both Switzerland and uh, England respectively. And joining me on this particular platform is the panelist to take us through the same. Joe Saina is equally an England fan like myself and, you know, going through plenty of predicaments. Man United not performing very well. Lying sixth will be playing Thursday night football. England, at the same time, it's not coming home, man. What's happening to the mighty three Lions? Are well, they three kittens? No, 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 no. At least yes. now we have the Women's World Cup, which started yesterday. And we are hoping for a positive view from that. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about that game. It was a disappointing game. Disappointing game. Jijo Mondi, a sports journalist, also joining us. It's been a while, man. How have you been? I've been good. Everything is cook and curry, right? Yeah, I can't complain that much. And also, Robert is also still with us. Eden Hazard, with regards to Mata's transfer, he's already officially joined Los Blancos of Real Madrid. Big blow to Chelsea Football Club, or they anticipated that to happen? It's not a big blow. This is something that they expected. It was premeditated because he announced after the last year's World Cup that he, he, he wanted to move to Madrid, which has been his, uh, his, his long-term dream for Makidia. And you, need, you see, the, the Madrid and Barcelona train only passes once. So when it goes and you, you, know, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get on board, you may regret in future. These are the biggest clubs in the world with the biggest history. So with him going to Spain, he's going for a new adventure and maybe he wants to win new stuff because there's nothing new at Chelsea he needs to win. Maybe the Champions League only. In the past, when a player uh, was associated with a move to Man United, it was such a privilege. But nowadays it's not. Well, the, the it's performance... Madrid and Barcelona now. Yes, yes, yes. The performance of the last couple of seasons can determine a lot in terms of transfer windows. That's one, two. Also, the qualification for continental football. So, if you look at Barcelona, Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, uh, if you look at now Man City, look at Liverpool, you know, there's continental football, there's prestige that comes with that move. So, obviously, it's going to be a big deal. But unfortunately, for the likes of Manchester United, likes of Arsenal, Marseille, you're looking at the you know lower tier of hybrid uh, clubs, the likes of AC Milan. It's going to be a problem to attract this to attract these big time players. Is that the same reason Man United has already netted the services of uh, little known Daniel James from Swansea? I think Manchester United can still attract whatever player that they want. It is that these players now at the moment, like Joe Sainer said, they don't have the ambition to come to Manchester United because Manchester does not give them the caliber of football that they want. But for those of these clubs like Manchester United, AC Milan, Arsenal, they are still living in the past. You see like Manchester United, all the time that they fail, Everybody is up and saying that we don't play like this. We need to be playing like this. We need to go back to the Ferguson kind of football. The best kind of football we watched was Ferguson. But now it has changed. You need to have a manager who comes in and plays his own brand of football that will guarantee you success. If Liverpool was still saying that we need the Kenny Douglas kind of football, we need the Robbie Fowler kind of football, they cannot have won the Champions League. They brought in a coach who just came in and said, this is how I want my team to play. These are the kind of players I want. And look at where they are. If Manchester goes on doing that, they are going to fail. For Real Madrid and Barcelona, when they say, Joe, are you coming to Barnabu? It's now or never. It's done. Yeah. They're not going to wait for you. The way George said it, that for you to come in next time and say, hey, last time it did not work, I need it now. The moment they say it's jump, you ask how high. <laughs> George, yes. you read from the same script with them? Uh, definitely. Oh, you know, they have suffered a lot since the departure, uh, since, since uh, Fadji left. And you see, he's, he's a guy who had a philosophy of maybe nurturing kids from the, from the academy and maybe buying some not so well, big names and nurturing them into big players. But uh, since he left, they have fumbled a lot with new coaches coming up with new ideas that uh, don't really work from Van Gaal to Mourinho 
to run gigs also tried and now social you see social has to come up with his own plan and and, and the system just like uh, robert has said and uh they, they have to suffer more because uh it will take maybe two to three more years to maybe come and go come back at par with the likes of madrid and uh, uh even even man city right now above them the likes of madrid barcelona and other big sides so it will take time but uh the, the, the sorry they have to 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 need to, to, to take a one line and then show, just like klopp did with liverpool it took long he lost Two, two, two major finals, but in the long run he made it. And right now he lost only the league by a, by a single point. And uh, I'm sure next season he'll be garnering for it. That's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is going for right now after the over 20 years spell. After the conclusion of UEFA Champions League football, that's final between Liverpool and Spurs, of which the latter won by two nil. There has been, you know, a huge build up as far as transfer window is concerned. Teams getting associated with whom they prefer signing, and even the uh, actual signings happening, like that of Eden Hazard from Chelsea Football Club to Santiago Bernabeu, Daniel James from Swansea to Man United. But what, overall, what do you make of the build up? I think it's going to become bigger. Obviously, right now, you're getting the smaller clubs making those fast uh, transfers a bit cheaper so that you can get over and done with before the pre-seasons. But for these major clubs, like Manchester United, uh, yesterday released 18 players. Out of the 18 players, only two were senior players, that being Ender Herrera and Antonio Valencia. So you would see them you now going for those um, smaller sort of uh, transfers. But if you look at people like Real Madrid, uh, Jovic, <coughs> Jovic, and Hazard. If you look at Borussia Dortmund again, making their two signings. Togan Hazard. Yes. You, you would want, if you're a manager, you'd want to settle this quick and fast so that by the time the preseason starts, obviously you have a team that you can gel with. However, media comes into the play. The board also comes into the play when they need to sign the, 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 the player that they want to sign. Um, also managers, like now uh, Mauricio Sari having these talks with Juventus, a possible Juventus um, managerial position. So again, it, it, it varies. But for the smaller teams, definitely, they get it done quicker. Away from matters transfer, we're going to speak about something that happened in midweek. I watched both games, Portugal against Switzerland. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo doing what he knows doing better, replicating, replicating his club and uh, glittering format Juventus for the national side. Of course, that uh, sparking, uh, eliciting that uh, debate that has existed before with regards to who between Ronaldo and Messi is better. Because when it comes to national team performance, Messi doesn't do better for Argentina and like Ronaldo uh, as he did for Portugal as far as UEFA Nations League is concerned. Holland against England. Holland talking about the orange. Of course, they missed out uh, in 2018 World Cup and even at some Euro Cup tournament. But the rebuilding looks like it's been you know, uh, splendid because they raced to the occasion and performed very better. Ahead of the final set for tomorrow, Portugal against Netherlands. Where do you put your money? Well, it's a tough one there because uh, Portugal, you've got Netherlands, a young team that is coming up with great young players playing good football, the total football that everybody used to talk about and it's a good one for them. But Portugal comes in with the experience of playing at a final, at a caliber tournament. The last time Netherlands won a big final was back in 2010 when they lost to Spain in the World Cup in South Africa. But now they have been out of the game. They have been out of two Euro championships. They have been out of two World Cup championships. Now they are coming back. The good thing is they have rebuilt and they have a team. But this team still has a long way to go. For Portugal, they won their Euro the current euro that everybody is talking about is in the hands of Portugal. They have got experienced players who rest to the occasion. And above it all, they have got Cristiano Ronaldo. So with those kind of factors that they have at them, I'll go for Portugal in this European final. Can we say this is the best ever Portugal squad? Of course, we had the likes of Anderson, uh, Deco, Luis Figo, Cristiano Ronaldo, then Luis Nani. But we have the likes of young uh, taxi, Joao Felix. We have William Cavallo at the mid, Bruno Fernandes. The experienced Bruno uh, uh, Menez is also at the back. Pepe. Can we say this is the best ever squad for Portugal? 
Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to say about that because I've not watched a lot of Portugal's past games, but I can say they have done their best. They have brought Portugal to the map because back in the day, Portugal played in this, I think, 74 World Cup with the likes of Eusebio. That was the best export that Portugal ever had up until now that we have Cristiano Ronaldo. But then again, it is a good group of players that have done their best to bring Portugal to where it is at the moment. GJ, your thoughts with regards to UEFA Nations League? England uh, fielded a completely different squad from whom they played during the World Cup. Gareth Southgate, where did he go wrong? Well, this is a game that England played so well. The only blunder they did is in the defence. Only two blunders and they were, they were, they were, they were punished uh, terribly. Because uh, they played so well, they were holding on. At le I think they were, they were either headed to penalty, they, 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 were, they were anticipating penalties or even maybe winning it in extra time. But uh, the kind of goals they conceded leaves a lot to desire. With uh, an own goal and then later another blunder that uh, ensured the Dutch goes, uh, go, got, got a 3 1 win. Well, that being said, yeah. England have been, uh, have not reached any major final since the 1966. So they have to fight more harder and uh, avoid such blunders because when it, it comes to the semi-finals and the finals, there is no rehearsal. It's what you do between in the 90 minutes that uh, will lead you to the title. So they didn't play that bad. It's only the blunders that can be rectified and maybe they, they, have, they, they have a better chance in the Euros in next season. I'm sure they'll do better. And uh, talking about Portugal and Holland, the Dutch are coming up so well. I look at uh, Delete at the back with uh, Van Dijk. A very, a very experienced defender who has just won the Champions League and a very young, coming, budding defender who reached the same is. So, they, they, apart from that, they have uh, better players like Dijon and uh, 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 former Manchester man, Deli Blind and uh, uh, Memphis Depay. Depay, who, are, is, who is coming up so well. So, the Dutch are also good and uh, it's going to be a very good final. Because in the, in, in the, with the Dutch having a strong defence and a better midfield, can be compensated by Ronaldo's uh, experience up front and maybe uh, the, the younger player, Joao Felix. But uh, the biggest blunder for Portugal is their defence, their main yeah. undoing. Pepe is 35 and Roberto is 34. If you, if you give them the younger players, uh, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, maybe coming up, uh, they may be good in experience, but when it comes to pace and maybe uh, creativity, their needs have reached the, the, the sell by date. So it's high time they Maybe, maybe uh, for me, this temporary class is permanent and experience still remains the key because we saw yesterday when Spain played Faroe Islands, they beat them 4-1 and uh, one man who was uh, on the score sheet as well is, you know, Sergio Ramos, the Real Madrid defender. So we can as well say experience is also key when it comes to even national football assignments. Well, it does um, because if you look at it from hindsight, England failed because of the same reason you just mentioned right now experience in the midfield. We had Fabian Death, we had Rose Barkley, and we had Declan Rice. Declan Rice has been brilliant for, for West Ham United. But if you look at the setup, the same setup that Holland had made with De Jong and uh, with De Jong and with uh, Gigi Wijnaldum, who just won the Champions League, if you look at the defense, Delit, and then again Virgil van Dijk, what Gareth Southgate was trying to play was trying to play from the back. There's only been one English team that has done that successfully this season and its success has been shown, which is Manchester City. Pep Guardiola has formed that basis of playing from the back the same way he's been doing it with Bayern Munich, the same way he's been doing it with Barcelona. Gareth Southgate is getting an English team that is used to the English way of playing. Okay, Long ball, defend and <coughs> counter to change them now to play from the back. And that was their undoing. Yeah. And that's why John Stones had those two errors. Mm -hmm. That was their undoing. You cannot play from the back if you're not used to it. John Stones has been playing from the back with the likes of Otamendi, with the likes of Van, uh, with, uh, Vincent Company, but has not been playing from the back with Harry Maguire because Harry Maguire has been playing a long ball with Leicester City. So the difference is big, and that was their undoing in that game. But the, the, the question I had when I saw that with the... Uh, Gareth Southgate is, you are going on to a critical stage of the competition yeah. and you are allowing players to go home. Mm -hmm. Because he could have stamped his ground with Henderson, the captain of Liverpool. Yes, you have won the UEFA Champions League. You are going to celebrate with your team, but I need you in camp. 
because you are my best player in Euros and there is no way I'm going to let you out. Eric Dyer, where was he? He should have made it to the team. So his selection might be a problem because you brought in players who have not played <coughs> together for a long time and the success of your team was with other players who are not. Yeah, because, in the if you, team. because if you look at the game they played against Croatia that they won at Wembley, yes. if you look at the same team that played in the semi-finals of the World Cup again against Croatia, yes. you know three at the back, there was that there was that unity. Mm -hmm. This time, obviously, the selection process was a bit absurd. I have to say, mm -hmm. not disregarding that these players are brilliant, they are brilliant. Yeah. It's just that the selection was a bit absurd because yeah. you know having Henderson and Ruben Loftus-Cheek in the midfield, yeah. at least you have some security in yeah. that. But you know Declan Rice, Fabian Delph, yes, Delph won the, uh, the Premier League with Man City. But do you see him as a defensive midfielder? I don't. Yesterday, FIFA Women's World Cup kicked off, though low key, but it did. And uh, France, of course, beating uh, Korea Republic for Nil. And today, several fixtures are on card. As we speak, of course, our African uh, counterparts, uh, South Africa, will be playing against Spain and German against China Republic. Another fixture, of course, will be between Norway and Nigeria. But how comes Women's World Cup can't 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 <laughs> <That's easy. laughs> match the standards of you know what we witnessed in Russia? A few that, months ago. Come on, come on. You, yeah, <laughs> people need to know that uh, as much as we talk about equality, and I want to apologize that I may not be quoted out of context. As much as we talk about feminism, we talk about equality between men and women, the women football has come a long way, but it's still got a long way to go. Realize that. The level of investment in the men's game is a lot. And the men's game is not where it is today because it started yesterday. No. It started a long time ago. So the women's game is just but catching up to what the men's game has been. Sports all over the world has majorly been a men's made. So majorly been male dominated but now we are getting women coming into sport yes we embrace them yes we accept them yes they should be there but it will take time for them to get to where they're actually one of the teams that we have to be proud of has got to be banyana banyana of south africa because it is the first time that they are making it to the women's world cup so that's a big plus also for african teams a team like Starlets, when they look at Banyana Banyana, they say, that's where we are supposed to be. That's, that's our caliber. That's the class where we are supposed to be. So Banyana Banyana is a big plus for Africa and for South Africa to make into women football and actually to the FIFA World Cup. You realize the teams that usually are in the women's FIFA World Cup are the traditional suspects. France, Brazil, Germany, Netherlands, Korea. So... For Africa, with Banyana Banyana, we have to say we are trying. Nigeria, they are there. Cameroon, they are there. But we still have got a lot of work to do to get them there. Yeah, is it high time the Arambe Starlets also emulate on their fellow African uh, women counterparts in Nigeria and Banyana Banyana of South Africa and qualify to you know, these global show pieces, because they're on the verge of qualifying to African Cup of Nations, the women's version, but, you know, during the last minute, Guinea-Bissau, <laughs> their petition uh, uh, going through, and therefore Kenya couldn't make it to the African show piece. Is it high time now they also qualify sure. to the World Star Cup? Starlets have the pedigree of making it all the way, but uh, we have to look at the kind of support we're giving them locally. Yes. Right now, if you look at the women's league, it's in shambles because uh, there are time they are they, 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 most of the matches were postponed because the players decided not to play. The, the, the FIFA cash has not been reimbursed into their accounts. The players are suffering. They not, are not being paid. They are just playing for passion. This is something that we, we, we only look at the KPL, but we leave alone the women's KPL, which has suffered a lot. But uh, let's hope Nick Mwendo and his guys will, will, will ensure the cash is reimbursed into their accounts. The league is given a better backup. Uh, we can even get more support. Because when you looked at the France match yesterday, it was sold out. 
sold out completely, which means the French are supporting their women. Yeah. Talking about Banyana Banyana, they have all the support. And that's why they've made their first encounter into the World Cup. This is their, their maiden, uh, their, their, their maiden showpiece. So uh, talking about, we have, we have to first uh, look at how we, we, may, we, we build our league because we can't, say, we, we can't go to the World Cup without uh, having a stronger league. Yeah. And because we don't have ma many players playing outside the country. So we have to rely on our local based stars to groom them and make them uh, better players for the showpiece. Then talking about continentally, the legs of Nigeria have been there all along. Nigeria has played in all the seven major tournaments, but they have never gone past the quarters. No, 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 past the second round. They have only been soaking goals time and again. So which means that uh, as a continent, we also have to fight hard. Cameroon is there. They did so well in the AFCON. They were finished in position two, and uh, Nigeria won it. But uh, they, we, they have to, we have to pull up our socks to, to, to win anything in the major tournament. Just like our men in the men's World Cup, our women, our women are also not doing good. So it's high time they fought harder. They got more support, and uh, the, the women's football will, will, will grow bigger day by day. Sure. And talk, talking about African football in general, of course, there are predicaments facing the same. Cup President Ahmad Ahmad was arrested yeah. on Thursday yes. morning and he was released yesterday. Several scandals rocking Cup office since he got into power, replacing the long serving Issa Hayatu. Ian Infantino, a man who got re elected as FIFA president, saying that, you know, integrity. Uh, has to prevail as far as governance and administration of football is concerned and he hoped for you know law taking its course and the culprits in case investigated and found you culpable you face the full force of the law is that going a long way in tarnishing the reputation of african football even as we seek you know at some point winning fifa world cup i mean definitely i mean you you can't be the prisoner of cf and then you're arrested okay indictions investigations allegations of you being corrupt allegations of you bribing here and there you can't do that as a leader and unfortunately the football fraternity will suffer the football fraternity will suffer when fifa are thinking about hosting another world cup in africa the football football fraternity will suffer when we are busy trying to push the elite african clubs to even compete in the club world cup yes. competitions it will it we will suffer Definitely, as Kenya, we will suffer. Why? Because by the time we are, bet we are putting our, our best foot forward, the Harambee stars, the Harambee starlets, by the time we're putting our best foot forward and we're saying, you know, we are ready for continental football, you know, something else will arise. And something, the worst part is that it's a corruption allegation. It's not even, you know, uh, certain things are not happening. It's a corruption allegation. Anything with corruption, anything with, you know, misappropriations of funds or just blatantly not being a professional in the office will make the football fraternity suffer. It is what it is. And with that Casablanca against Esperance, there will be a replay after uh, the shambles that was witnessed during that particular clash. How comes CAF Champions League is home and away? How no, comes it can't no, be one of just like UEFA Champions League football overseas? Okay, that, that's just our modality of uh, CAF, how they decided how they want to get their winner and they went for the final to be home and away. That one we've got no problem with it whatsoever. You can play home and away. And this time around, the games were in one country, Morocco. The thing was the caliber and level of officiating that was on that game tells you that it was not good enough. When you see players walking off the pitch an hour before the game comes to an end, tells you something was wrong in this game. Who is this person that is influencing such kind of decisions? We've got the VAR that with a video assistant referee that was allowed into that game. It is going to be brought into the Africa Cup of Nations. Why was the referee not following that? Now they're saying that the final will be played in a neutral ground, probably South Africa. But it's already said that African football is really tarnished. It's not that clean as everybody expected it to be. When you see a caliber final like that being thrown into shambles the way it did, then you see our own president being caught up because of tax evasion issues in France and being questioned by authorities tells you the level of football in Africa Worldwide, it's dirty, yes, but more so in Africa, the game is really on its knees.
Yes. Jojo Mond, is that the same reason from journalistic point of view? Is that the same reason we've witnessed several African football lovers supporting overseas football at the expense of their own and they are being accused of lack of patriotism? Because we've had even uh, long-serving administrators in Nicolas Musoni when Ka Sekafa is being staged at home. For example, again, Pete in Kenya and Rwanda played at Nyanya National Stadium, then at the nearby joint in Nairobi West, people are in pubs watching Arsenal against Newcastle United. Is that partly the cause? Sure, to some extent that is, because uh, Africa is in shambles, just like Robert said. And uh, let me cl clarify, clarify one thing. Eh? During the finals between Esperance and uh, my dad, <coughs> the guys were responsible for the VAR, uh, they called Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. They came up with a statement saying that the VR had issues, it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what the players were, 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 were crying foul off was, why do you have this thing here while well, it's not working? They were asking the ref, just make a clear decision, talk to your linesman and come yeah, up with a decision. With because if it's not working, we will waste time here and at the end of the day, we won't come to a quorum. So that was a big blunder. I hope it doesn't happen anytime again. Because if you have VR and it's not working, what is the function of it being there? So then again, uh, we are headed to the AFCON. It's only under a week before the tournament kicks off. The official Umbro ball has not reached the, 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 the participating teams uh, and countries right now. What, the, what does that mean? What does that tell you? We don't have an official website running ready right now. We should be having an official website for CAF, CAF and African AFCON running and that shows that uh, we are we are ready we are ready for this tournament but right now if you look at the balls being used by Akinawanyama, kina egypt not yet we've not gotten the official ball despite being launched a month ago so africa is still down we need to catch up we need to pull up our socks our president being caught up in uh, in cases in paris with sus sus suspicions tells you a lot football is dirty but uh, in africa i think it's more pathetic because even look at, uh, there's a time I talked to Dylan Carr during his uh, tenure at Gore. He said their match against Esperance in Tunis in Tunisia was the dirtiest match he's ever witnessed in his life. Because referees were doing whatever they want. Like a, a free kick is given to an opponent, opposing player while the, the, the Arab player, the one who was kicked, the Kenyan player. He was telling me it was so bad that he felt like football has gone to the dogs. But we, can, we, we still have a lot to do. By postponing, the, by ensuring the, 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 the by ensuring the final will be, will be replayed after Afcon, it's another big blunder because at, like, at least eight players from Esperance will have their contracts done by then. What does that mean? If they don't renew their contracts, maybe temporarily to play the finals, they'll play fringe players. We won't get the best out of the finals. The same thing happens to Wider. There are players who are contracts are running out by by the time the Afcon is done. So Africa, Mama Africa, we need to work hard from local to continental, uh, everywhere. We need to pull up our socks. We're still very down. Joe, you are parting short your final submissions. Uh, European leagues are over. Now we're looking forward to African Cup of Nations. And even s there's an American tournament that is about to kick off. Which one will you be following? I think. Africa Cup of Nations, definitely. Um, it's it's really sad listening to my brothers in studio, uh, you know, aggrieving to what is happening in African football. Um, you're always attacking me when I'm watching international football, and I usually keep quiet. But some of these things are there. Okay, when the structures are not in place, this is what happens to the to the great game of football. Okay, they they come from the rest of the world. They come into South Af to South Africa. And they host a World Cup. Brilliant. Last two two nights ago, they used VAR England versus um, England versus Holland. Holland. It works very well. They say obviously that goal should have stood. Again, when it comes to Africa, it's not working. You, you get all these inconsistencies. Yeah, all these inconsistencies are not right. So, African Cup of Nations definitely would be would, would be something I'll I'll obviously look into. Um, and there's this French team, the French, the French team, the Ladies World Cup. I, they are a, they are a force to be reckoned with. I watched this today's game, and their counter attack was brilliant. They have a defender who looks like Virgil Van Dijk. I think her name is Renard or Bernard or something. And yes, she's brilliant. Uh, yes, yes, she's got. She got your attention. I, I'm telling you, uh, it's going to it's going to be it's going to be a very 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 interesting women's World Cup.
Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer, did you watch that particular clash? No, a I long didn't. one, but an upset. I, I, again, you see, as a football fan, you're used to 90 minutes. You're not used to a whole day. <laughs> it's like asking about the Cricket World Cup. <laughs> Osoro, your final thoughts, man? Well, it's been a great show, a great weekend, but we pray that everything will be all right in the world of sports. Promise on a live television what you're going to do for me after here. Oh, I promise him a cigar. And let's say let's I'm about the two marks. Yeah, I'm about the two marks. Big man, nowadays, you know, yeah. things, uh, yeah. words, uh, you know things, we don't listen to words from the mouth. Mm. It's actions, but. It's actions, eh? That's yeah, 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 you yeah, get you a return ticket to go and watch Nottingham Forest play. Yeah, man. Two times UEFA <laughs> Champions League winners, and of course, they are not coming back to English Premier League. Championship is. is, is it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard. I really am. I'm really sympathizing with the teams that went back down. You see what happened to Aston Villa. It was that even Bolton Wanderers. Bolton Wanderers. At least Aston Villa back. Look what happened to Derby County after all that that Frank Lampard has done. That the championship is one of the hardest, if not the hardest league in the, the world. The, 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 the championship battles reminds me of Ashuja who are almost going down. You see, once you go down, coming back is very difficult. The same way Thika United has been relegated <laughs> from the National Super League. Yes, it's terrible. You find people who have been there, too. they've been trying to fight all year long. What makes you think that you'll come and overtake them? They've been going so close to the Hong Kong Sevens, trying to catch up. Then you come and think you'll go, just go through. I thank Shuja for fighting hard, the likes of Amonde, mm. because he was in the DHL uh, best players uh, ranking. And uh, the likes of uh, the, uh, Bush, Male, Jacob, Oje, they, they did splendidly do, well. They, they, they do a part on the back. And let's, let's uh, just like you said, sport is dirty and we need to, to invest in sports. Let's not give players 24,000 per month, yet they're fighting, they're bleeding for their country outside there. It doesn't make sense. Let's ensure we have cash, even if it's the government. If we don't have corporates coming in, let the government help because uh, there's the, uh, the, 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 the sports fund that is there, right? So we, do, we don't need excuses every now and then. Let's give these guys what they deserve. Let's, let, let's perf let, let them perform knowing that they are giving, getting a good cash at the end of the day. Splendid show. It's been every Saturday, 1 to 3. We're talking matter sporting disciplines, both locally and beyond. Uh, ever exciting world of sports. Of course, you don't want to miss this. Let's again do this next Saturday, same time, same place. My name is Max Olasika alongside Robert Osoro. Wish you a fantastic weekend. Enjoy, uh, but let the conversation keep flowing. At Wasike Max at Osoro, but hashtag touchline Y254. National Super League coming to a culmination tomorrow. Mouthwatering clashes expected to happen. Thika United against Kisumu All Stars, Wazito FC. Uh, uh, playing at home at Camp Toyo against St. Joseph's, then uh, another clash will be in, El in Eldoret, where Eldoret youth play host to Nairobi Steamer. Both three looking forward to be crown champion of the second tier football and get promoted to Kenya Premier League. And of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on that particular development. It's been a pleasure doing this. Let's meet next time. Have a fantastic weekend and enjoy. Bless.